many of you can remember back as far as 1931. It is an era that is dead, which we all devoutly hope will never return. It was an era when all the United States were dry, but when some of the people were doing their best to keep the country wet. Joe sent me. All wet. Gangsters received more notoriety than kings. And it was an era when some wealthy society matrons vied with each other for the company of these Napoleons of organized crime. In between drinks, traffic became congested. Some shady lawyers made fortunes defending their, uh, well, their distinguished clients. The verdict? Not guilty, of course. But some lawyers were not so successful. Oh, hello, Johnny. Hello, Will. Hey, where's your furniture going? Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. It's going back to the finance company. Finance company? But I loaned you the money for the payment last week. Well, I had to entertain some prospects. Oh. Oh, sit down a minute. Hello. Yes, this is attorney Will Allen speaking. Oh, now look, lady, your boyfriend got off easy thanks to me. Well, he only got a year. Uh, well, I'm sorry, I did all I could for him. Goodbye. Oh. Oh. <laughs> You uh, lost again, huh? Oh, it was a hopeless case. Uh, yesterday you said it was such a cinch. Didn't even have to prepare the case. Johnny, the law is a bottomless pit. Well, the guys you defend it is. Twelve cases and twelve guys go to jail. What are you trying to do, make me lose confidence in myself? You've got too much confidence in yourself. Maybe if you prepared a case once in a while, you might win it. Stop worrying, will you? I wanted to move to larger quarters anyway. Money brings money. Yeah. Why, all I need is one outstanding criminal for a client, not these small-time petty chiselers. Here, get the back. In the meantime, you can take me out to dinner. No, I can't. I've got a date. A date? You? <laughs> Who's the frustrated little woman? She's not frustrated. This is Judy Parker. You remember her. She lived on our block for years. I don't know her. She must have been one of the goons. She's very nice. Oh, this is going to be great, listening to her dull chatter all evening. You aren't going to listen to her. You aren't even coming with us. And I used to tell myself, Judy Parker is the most beautiful girl in the block. Oh, I will, Alan. You never even looked at me. I didn't. Ask Johnny. I'm always talking about you. He... Sure. Uh, I was telling him in the office. You sure were. Oh. <clears throat> Take care of that, will you, Johnny? My, my hands are full. Now, this is for you to remember me by while I leave for just a few minutes to make a very important phone call. Thank you, Will. Uh, take care of her for me, will you, Johnny? I I've got to tie up a few loose ends on a case I just finished. Finished is right. The guy went to jail for a year. <laughs> hey. Criminal law must be terribly exciting. I'm glad you brought Will along tonight. I didn't bring him. I couldn't get rid of him. I wanted to be alone with you tonight, too, Judy. I say, by the way, I'm having a little fashion show tomorrow. Would you like to come? Oh, I'd love to. Of course, I know selling lingerie isn't very romantic. Not like criminal law, but... There's nothing wrong with selling lingerie. I'm glad to hear you say that because, well, you remember that promotion I told you about? Mm-hmm. I got it. No. Huh? Oh, that's wonderful. Sure. Uh, you know, with a promotion like that, a, a fella could uh, do a lot of things. He could... He could build a home and raise a... That is, if... How do you feel about marriage? Oh, I think it's wonderful for anyone who wants to get married. Well, you know, I've only been out with you a few times, but each time I've wanted to ask you... Uh, uh, I've wanted to ask you... Yes? Would... Would... Would you like to go to a movie tonight? 
Oh, I'd rather not if you don't mind. I I'm a little tired. Yeah, I'm a little tired too, I guess. You tired, Johnny? Yeah. Well, look at the boy. He's all in. Look, Johnny wants to get some sleep, so why don't we go somewhere and dance? No, thanks. Perhaps some other night. You don't know what you're missing. You're passing up Najinsky's shadow. She'll live. Well, look, tomorrow's another day. <laughs> yeah, I've got a busy day, too, tomorrow. Do you like it? Oh, it's lovely. What's it called? Uh, Dawn. What's the number on that? 621. Thank you. How many, please? A half a dozen assorted sizes. She's a lovely model. She's not half as lovely as you are. What's the number? Main 4385, uh, 419. Say, Judy, I wanted to ask Johnny, you Johnny, if... can we go now? We've showed them practically everything. You have? Oh! Oh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. I'll see if he has any. Uh, what I was going to ask you is... Johnny, do you have any of these with lace inserts? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Here. Now, look... I never could get anywhere rubbing two sticks together. Huh? What were you going to say, Johnny? Oh, I was going oh, to John, ask you... Johnny. Uh, goodbye, girls. Look, John. Bye. There's Louis Maroney, Big Maroney's brother. Say, Johnny, I like your neighbors. Hmm? You ain't doing nothing, kid. Let's do it together. Come on, Joan. Who are they? Oh, some hoodlums who visit an out-of-town big shot in there. One of them's rather good looking. Huh? Hiya, Judy. I'm sorry I'm late. What are you late for? Well, I was tied up in court. Uh, honey, would you excuse us for just a minute? Sure. Huh? I want to talk to you. Oh, yeah, excuse us. <laughs> what? What is it? I got great news for you. You have? I'm going to pay you back all the money I owe you. Oh, you're fooling. No, how much is it? Well, now, let's see. Um, here. Uh, beginning with the $2 I loaned you in high school, yeah. it's exactly $849.07. I'll have it for you tomorrow. Just as soon as I swing a big deal I'm working on, which I need twenty dollars. Oh, no, 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 wait, no, wait. Uh, Why, aren't you going to lend it to me? Well, I, I can't afford not to. Uh, let's see, five, ten, twenty. Thanks a lot. You're well, welcome. Judy, are you ready? Uh, Your display was beautiful, Johnny. Thanks uh, for inviting me. Oh, you're not leaving. I, I thought you were going to have dinner with me. No, you didn't mention it. So when Will called me this morning, I told him I was free. Oh. I'm sorry. Shall we go? Call me soon, will you? Oh, all right. Bye. Bye. What's the matter, baby? You look as if you'd just lost your last lace applique. Uh, here's two bucks. That covers the high school debt. Oh, would you like to have dinner with me tonight, Millie? Your enthusiasm is irresistible, Johnny. <laughs> and I know just the movie I want to see, too. Yeah. I take a trip to the border and you... Wait a minute, dead man. Oh, this is fantastic. It is not. It's true. It's based on the life of Big Maroney. Public enemy number 21. Yes. Oh. Now there's a guy. Now that's for nothing. The next time I'll put an extra eye on your head. And another thing. Stay away from those cops. I understand you're getting friendly. I didn't rat on your boss, honest. Shut I didn't. Up. You got him wrong, Deadpan. I tell you, you got him wrong. You talk too much. <laughs> oh, no. Now, just because I like you, I sent you them little presents. Three cases of uncut scotch. 
But I don't like any of my dogs running low, see? Oh. Let's, let's go, Millie. Go on. And leave this. Are you crazy? This guy's my type. That guy? I'm on the level. Lots of women go for men like him. Well, Judy doesn't. Oh, Judy's no different. She likes men who assert themselves. But he's a roughneck. And then he gets a lot of roughnecking, too. Wait a minute, sure. You ought to be more like him. Please, Millie, let's get out of here. Look, little boy, you go on home. I want to see the rest of this picture. Oh, but I can't leave you here alone. I'll be okay. I'll take a cab home. Well, you, you sure you'll be all right? Sure, sure. Thanks for everything, Johnny. Okay. See you in lingerie. Whiskers. Oh, boy. Sure knows what he wants and gets. Oh, boy. Wish I could find a guy like that. So women go for mugs like you. They like them tough. Well? I can be tough. Okay, mush nose. Start them hens climbing. Higher. One more move out of you and your middle name is Lead, see? Okay, mush nose, you asked for it. Bowie! My doll's running around loose, see? Next time, I'll put an extra eye on your head. Just a minute, bud. Oh, that's all right. I got all the time in the world. Well, look, I don't want to have to rub you out, horse face. But one more slip out of you and... Okay. Okay. Those fellas always win, even in telephones. Double bourbon, uncut. Maybe he's a big time operator. Gloria, I'm scared. Perhaps we shouldn't have left the party. They'll be wondering where we went. But you wanted to meet some of these characters. Oh, I do, but right there. Oh, oh, that was terribly clumsy of me. Watch your step, sister. I'm terribly sorry. We both are.
My name's Gloria. What's yours? Look, sister, why don't you stick to the nice boys? Nice boys bore me. important. I do. Mm -hmm. Look, sister, I tell you what, I'll buy you a drink. Bartender. Champagne cocktail. Her too. Ah, good evening, Mr. Moroni. Uh, Pierre. Mr. Moroni, stay. Good evening, Mr. Moroni. Good evening, Mr. Moroni. Good stuff. Very well. We ought to consider the Mabouche proposition. It's out. But they can't do any harm. They're small time. Mabouche has worked herself up into public enemy number 24. So what, boss? So we let him work the northwest side. And from that, we get a commission. It's a good deal. Tell me, who am I? You're Big Maroney, public enemy number 21. Public enemy number 21 don't make deals with public enemy number 24. Tomorrow morning, you take care of him a boost. That's your job for tomorrow morning, little Joe. Remember that. Okay, boss. Now check the lick in the joint. So, here you are, Mr. Moroni. That ain't none of my stuff, is it? Oh, no, Mr. Moroni. Good. Can't take no chances with my stomach. Hey, that dame over there by the bar, who is she? Oh, one of the young society ladies looking for trouble. Yeah, that dame's got class. Check those hats, will ya? man over there is flirting with me. Point him out. Right there. Be right back. That's for nothing, see? Did you see that little squirt? Oh, you were wonderful. I just wish he was a bit bigger. Tell me, who am I anyway? You're Big Maroni, public enemy number 21. Yeah. Let's get out of here. When there might be a fight over me, I feel like Helen of Troy. Okay, Helen, stay and launch your ships, but I'm going. I'm afraid we'll have to go. Okay, babe. Keep your nose clean. Okay. Lock the doors, boys. Hey, you. The big fella wants a word with you. What big fella? Him, Maroney. Maroney? Maroney? He's Maroney? Oh. No. Oh, gosh. Oh, oh gee, I... Oh. You're still alive. Wise guy, huh? Oh, Mr. Maroney, I, I didn't know it was you. Honest, I didn't. What you did was slow suicide. Oh, Mr. Maroney, you wouldn't. You know, I saw a picture about you tonight. There, there was something about it I really liked, Mr. Maroney. One thing, it showed you for the good sport you really are. That scene where you forgave that guy, it got me. It really did. Right here. Yeah, that was a good scene. Just like me. 
I want to give you a break, son. Oh, gee, thanks. Now, sit down. I ain't going to kill you. <laughs> Outright. Okay, boys. Make what the William tell. William tell? Oh, no, please. I... <laughs> Oh, shut up. Well, nobody can't say I never gave him a chance. You're too good-natured, boss. That's the trouble with you. Well, there's one guy I don't feel good-natured about. Mabuse. Remember that tomorrow morning, little Joe. Get him looking good, kid. We want you to die clean, Mabuse. Look, little Joe, why do you want to do a thing like this to me? Nothing personal, Mabuse. Nothing personal. Well, that's what I mean. You keep saying nothing personal. Where's your profit? What you was trying to say? Well, I'm just trying to say you ought to make a profit. You got me interested. Highly interested. Well, it's very simple. Now look, I'm ambitious. Right now, I'm public enemy number 24, and I'd like to become public enemy number 23, which means that maybe public enemy number 21 should step down. Are you suggesting that my boss ought to be deceased? Big Maroney and obituary? It pays good. It pays very good. It could be a grand down and a grand BD. BD? Body delivered. Make it 15 yards down and 15 COD. You made yourself a deal. How soon? As soon as I make one little stop on the way. This one's on me. And little Joe, don't cross me. Now, would I cross anybody? I didn't understand you, Jock. I kind of find it in myself to understand you. I didn't think you realized what you had done. I realize it perfectly, Angus. I agreed to pay Mr. Little Joe a commission of $500 for locating the ingredients of a funeral. We ain't had a good funeral in three months. That's too much for the funeral of Mr. Mebu. He's neighbor public enemy number 24. And besides which, his following is in the northwest side. And as you well know, John, the northwest side is near a good funeral town. For a dice in Studboker, ah, but it's nay good for funerals. You're mighty hasty with your fault finding. But might I ask you whose idea it was to salvage and use the same casket over and over again? It was yours, Jock, and a good one. But Mr. Mabuse is nay what? Are we making a profit on Mr. Mabuse's funeral? Ah, we're making a profit, a wee profit. Well, do we always have to make a big profit? Jock, to think that we have a radical in the family. Aye? Mr. Little Joe would like to see you, Mr. Angus. Maybe he's arranged the ingredients already. He works fast. Send the man in. Hi, boys. Good morning, Mr. Joe. I got to thinking about our proposition. I got a change to make. I come for more dough. More money? You've already taken advantage of us through Jock, charging $500 commission for Mr. Mabuse. This ain't for Mabuse. It's for Big Maroney. Maroney? Public enemy number 21? Yeah. How close is he to needing a funeral? Close enough. He's got some people mad at him. Oh, well. Didn't I tell you he was a good man? Well, were there ever an argument, Jock? 
Well, boys, it's worth a grand more. And I'm letting you off cheap. What man? To hear you talk, you think Mr. Moroni is one of the crown heads of Europe? Hey. Are you making any cracks about my boss? Oh, he's a lad now, is he? He's right, Angus. This'll be the biggest thing since the Chicago fire. We can route the funeral right through the business district. It's a bark. Where is this game? Right down the hall, boss. Well, you see these suckers, strictly from off a banana boat. Yeah? And I got it all set for you, just to walk in and take over. Gee, that's mighty nice of you, little Joe. It ain't nothing, boss. I'll tell you what, if anything should ever happen to you while you're in my employ, don't worry about a thing. I'll give you the swellest funeral you was ever at. Gee, you're an angel, boss. Think nothing of it. Hey, where is this guy? Please. Johnny Dill, I won't listen to another word. You have to listen. You were out with Alan last night. You're going out with him again tonight. I know what's wrong with that. I think he's nice. Oh, he just makes you think he's nice. That's a lawyer for you. Not even a good lawyer, either. He is a good lawyer. He isn't. Ask 12 hopeless cases. You got that nightgown from my wife you promised me? It's in my sample trunk, Mr. McGow. I'll be right up. Now, look, Judy, please, I... Get out of there, Mr. Maroney. <laughs> He's dead. Oh, uh, ju just a minute. Look, Mr. Maroney, please. Get back in. Look, you got it. Maroney, please. Wait, just a minute. I'm coming. Look. Mr. Maroney. Wait, just a minute. I'm coming. Be there. Um, come. come in. Oh, come on. Just dropped in to pick up that nightgown, Mr. Dill. Well, I, I, I can't seem to find it, Mr. McGow. I... Well, uh, help you locate it. I haven't been a house detective for 23 years, you know, for nothing. Oh, mm. I remember now. I, I, I saw it at the stock room. Uh-huh. Well, uh, well, what's that? This is the type of sample you showed me. Oh, it, it's too small. Why, it's, this is it. <laughs> so it is. Now, look, you take that right home to Mrs. McGowan. <laughs> McGowan, you, you, you couldn't right see it for looking. No, I you? couldn't see it. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. I'm much obliged to you, Mr. Dill. You know, my wife, she's certainly going to enjoy this little well, nap. Will you have a drink? No, 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 thanks. I, I couldn't. Uh... <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, it's a, f look. Look, 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 Mr. McGow. Mr. McGow. Yeah.
please. Look. Look. Look, please. Here. I... Yeah, look, please, Mr. McGowan. Please. Come on. Come on. All right. You killer, you. What? what are you talking about? The cop was delicting in the trunk. Why, there's, there's not, nothing in that trunk except a few samples and this wax model. They, they kind of fell out. Hmm. Hmm. I better call that fellow in 313 and tell him about his last batch. I'm sorry, Mr. Dill. It's all right. I'm very sorry, Mr. Dill. Believe me, I'm sorry, Mr. Dill. And please, please, don't tell anybody. I won't. Please. Well, I... I'd better call the police. No. No, they'd never believe me. They'd think I did it just to revenge last night. Oh, I... Got to get Maroney out of here, I... Hello. Hello, this is Mr. Dill. Uh, look, would you ask the Herky Drive Yourself Company to send me a truck right away? Yes, and then ask a porter to come up to my room for a trunk. Hmm? How do I feel? <laughs> I feel fine, thank you. Here, if it ain't William Tell. Hello. What are you, moving or something? Uh, just, 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 just a few samples. Samples of what? Brew? D lingerie. Oh, lingerie. Say, maybe you got something that'll fit my doll. Uh, Let's open it up and see. Huh? I, I haven't the key with me. Well, then we'll bust it open. <laughs> we gotta find the boss, Louie. We ain't got time to fool with this. Yeah, yeah that's right. Okay. Yes, I... Oh, come on. Come on. Okay. Careful now. Careful. Don't drop it. Oh, there. Come on. Here. Here, thanks. Gee, five bucks. Yeah, it's all right. I... Hey, you! Who? Me? Yeah, you. You don't think you're going to get away with this, do you? We got laws, you know. I didn't do it, officer. I can explain. Explain nothing. You're blocking the sidewalk. Now get out of here before I give you a ticket. Yes, sir. Sir.
Then you come right away, Judy. You know where it is. The Algonquin Plaza. Yeah, right above Murphy's Laundry. Yeah. And hurry, will you please? I'm hungry. See you, Judy. Did you bring the food? Yes, here. Oh, boy. You know, I haven't eaten for six days. That's the only reason I called you. I didn't want to get you mixed up in this. Why did you do it? Uh, hmm? Well, you, you don't think I'm the gangster, do you? I don't know what to think. You didn't kill Big Maroney because he wouldn't buy your lingerie. I didn't kill Maroney. Well, then why are you hiding out? Well, it... Will Allen says you have nothing to worry about. Will Allen? Uh-huh. What's he got to do with this? He's going to defend you. Oh, he's going to defend me. Oh, no. No, I'm not going to be hopeless case number 13. You won't be a hopeless case if you're innocent. Oh, Johnny, listen to me. I don't want you living like this, a fugitive. Mm. Always running from place to place. I am innocent. Well, then come back and prove it. Let me call Will. Please, for my sake. Oh, okay, call him. Main 41011. Yeah, tell him to bring another hamburger. Oh, hurry up with that sandwich, will you, Johnny? I told the reporters we'd be right down. We'd be right down where? Why? You're going to give yourself up on the steps of the city hall. The city hall? Oh, why can't I go down to a policeman on a corner? Oh, no, we got to do this right, Johnny. Why, I planned a sensational surrender. Well, uh, maybe it'd be better to do it more quietly. Well, no, they're waiting. Well, there'll be reporters, photographers, at least 100,000 people, and the mayor's going to be there. The mayor? Yes, why, this is going to be the biggest surrender since Cornwallis. Will he have to go to jail? Oh, only as a formality. I'll have him out of jail by morning. Mm -hmm. Public enemy number 21 surrenders. Crowds watch killers surrender to justice at City Hall steps. Isn't that great? Oh, what publicity. Well, I thought you were going to get me out on bail this morning. Red tape, Johnny. I'll have you out of this cell by tomorrow. It's been four weeks, and every day you've been telling me you're going to get me out tomorrow. Well, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Your trial starts tomorrow. Are you sure you can get me out for my trial? Look at that audience. Hmm? Didn't I tell you? You're a celebrity. Yes, but for how long? Hello, Johnny. Doesn't he look menacing? Doesn't Johnny look terrible? I just can't believe it. Look at those women. And every one of them in love with you. The whole world loves you, Johnny. I can see 12 people who don't. Look at them. They've got bars in their eyes. So that's the guy that knocked off Nick Maroney. He must be tougher than he looks. You know, he still looks like a punk to me. He don't look trustworthy. His eyes are too close together. Everybody rise. Hear ye, hear ye, the circuit court is now in session. Honorable Richard R. Watson, judge presiding. Be seated.
State versus Johnny Dill, alias Killer Dill. And you say you heard the defendant threaten the deceased? It was the night before the murder. He was talking on the phone. I don't want to have to bump you off, he says. But any more slip-ups and... I knew he meant... <laughs> Your witness. Now, uh, you say that my client said any more slip-ups and... Uh, <laughs> now, does that sound like the sort of thing that public enemy number 21 would do? Public enemy number 21? I object. It is not your place to object, Mr. Dill. It is for your lawyer to object. Well, I object to my lawyer. Well, uh, we are sitting there in a blue cockatoo, minding our own business when this this vicious character come over and provoke injury on a boss by mashing his nose into his puss. And this cold brother killer, he knew the corpus delecti was reclining in his trunk. And then, and then when my plant was turned, he whisked the evidence away from under my nose. I was the porter. Five bucks he gives me to help him load the trunk. Five bucks. I was robbed. It's in the bag, Louis. Yeah. That'll learn him to go around knocking off my brother. I will now call Miss Millie Gardner. Miss Millie Gardner, take the stand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Now, Miss Gardner, uh, you have known the defendant for some time, I believe. Oh, yes, for years. Mm -hmm. He was only selling junior misses when I first knew him. And during this time, you have always found him to be a model citizen? Always. His disguise was perfect. Uh, it wasn't a disguise. <laughs> Order in the court. Yeah, the trial's practically over. I still can't figure out the defense that Dill's lawyer's putting up. The wise money's betting ten to one on Dill's conviction. He was wonderful, so calm and cold and, and brutal. So glamorous. I knew the minute I saw him he was an important gangster. I haven't got a chance. What are you talking about? I'm talking about my chances. The whole country is calling me public enemy number 21. Shh, quiet. Uh, call Miss Judy Parker. Miss hmm? Parker, you have known the defendant for quite some time. Yes. Now, would you say that the defendant had the capabilities of a killer? Certainly not. And have you ever had any reason to suspect the defendant of leading a double life? Never. He was always kind and gentle. And even a bit timid. Timid? He talked mostly about settling down. Mm -hmm. Said he wanted a home in the country and chickens and dogs. He was very sweet. And most considerate. Thank you, Miss Park. Your witness. That's a very pretty picture you painted the defendant, Miss Parker, but... Uh, of course, uh, we understand why you'd like to see this killer go free. I understand you've announced your intention to marry the defense attorney, William Allen. Be quite a feather in his cap if he won this case, wouldn't it? Oh, so that's what you were doing while I was in jail. Sit down, you fool, and shut up. What are you trying to do, ruin me? Ruin you? I'll kill you. If I must die for murder, it's gonna be yours. Any more outbursts, and I shall hold you for contempt. Let us proceed with the case. Uh, may I ask the court a question, Your Honor? Request granted. The evidence shows that Moroni wore an 18 and a half collar. Yes, that's right. Would the court ask Mr. Allen what the size of his collar is? Well, 15 and a half. 
then how could a man who couldn't choke a 15 and a half neck be able to break an 18 and a half neck? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. Defendant will rise and face the jury. Oh. How does the jury find? Not guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm guilty. I... Oh. oh, no. Oh. oh, he's gone. Oh. I want to talk to that mouthpiece. You wait for me. Innocent, huh? How do you like that? Not guilty. Well, he ain't going to get away with it. Leave it to me, boss. I'll get him. Alan? Yeah. That's a pretty cute little trick you pulled off there. Part of the business, just part of the business. You know, I could use a smart mouthpiece like you. Why don't you call me sometime? Maboose. You know, that client of yours, that killer Dill, must be a pretty rough boy. Well, you have to be to put Big Maroney out of business. That's what I mean. Maybe you could arrange a meeting. Yeah, I'll call you. Thanks. Thanks a million. You don't remember me, do you, Mr. Allen? Oh, should I? Well, I started you on your career. Oh? I was your first client. Oh, really? Yes, I got a parking ticket and you wouldn't let me pay the $5 fine. Oh, yes, but I appealed the case. <laughs> and I got 10 days in jail. I knew when you had things beginning to look so bad for that guy, he just had to be innocent. Sure he's guilty. Nobody believes otherwise. It was a trick defense. They must have rehearsed it for weeks. Yeah, that Allen's a smart lawyer. Al? All right, my boots. I'll handle the whole deal. Right. That looks fine. Yes? Mr. Dill is here, Mr. Allen. Oh, send him right in. Hiya, killer. Oh, you folks run along, will you? I've got some business to talk over with the big boy. Sit down, old man. Well, how does it feel to be a free man? Free? The whole world still thinks I'm guilty. Well, you're not behind bars anyway, thanks to my brilliant defense. Your brilliant defense convinced everyone that I'm public enemy number 21. That's why I sent for you to come up here. Oh. I fixed it for you to join Mabuse and his mob. Well, that's... Mabuse and his mob? Yeah. They want you to be their leader. I don't want to be their leader. Oh, now look, will you know that I'm not a gangster? Ah, uh, but they don't. They think you're a pretty tough hombre. Well, I, I'm not. Well, unfortunately, you're going to have to be for your own protection. What do you mean, for my own protection? Louis Maroney is after you. Louis Maroney is after me? He's trying to square things for the murder of his brother. Oh. And he still thinks you did it. Oh. Now. Joining up with Mabuse will give you not only protection, but prestige. No, 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 I don't want to get into more trouble. Now, look, look, please. I, I, I tried being a gangster for just one night, and look what I got into. No, no, Will. I am going back to selling lingerie. If you live. Uh, Louis Maroney can do what he wants. my booze, I'll be right over as soon as I pack. Well, you don't have to pack, Johnny. You can go right on staying at the same hotel. Oh, no. That Maroney bunch is always hanging around there. I'm moving in with Mabuse. Mabuse has already moved in with you. You see, your hotel is now in Mabuse territory. Oh. 
Why, they'll take care of you like a baby. But what good will that do me? I'll be safe, but they'll still think I'm a killer. Oh, my kind of a life isn't worth saving. Well, now, wait a minute. Have you thought of this? This might be your chance to find the killer. Yeah. Yeah, that's an idea. But how am I going to get back to my hotel? They've got field artillery outside the door. Wait a minute. Come on. Wait a minute. The coast is clear. Now make a run for it. for just when we had them. But this is the borderline, little Joe. Ain't you seen the new map? Look, this is my boost territory now. Uh, you know, these changing frontiers confuse me. Hey, boss, get a load of this. The killer sure goes for the dames. You must have a harem. And all sizes. All right, now look, you guys. Killer Dill isn't going to be a permanent fixture around here like you may think. He doesn't know it yet, but we're just going to make use of him till the right time comes. Then he goes for a riot. And you jump from public enemy number 24 to 21. That's right. I skipped two grades that way. Pretty sharp, boss. And stop calling me boss. Call him the boss. That way you don't get wise. Put that stuff away. Got any friends, boss? Cut it. Yeah, cut it. Let's get down to business, Killy. Hmm. I've just been thinking. Why don't we show the world we got a legal contract, you and us? Let's knock off the blue cockatoo tonight. Shove the Maroney gang right out. Yeah, why not? There's Jonesy. Ah. Here comes Mr. Dill, the elite lingerie salesman. Get rid of him. I don't want any of his lingerie. Killer Dill. Oh. Hello, Mr. Dill. Hi. Why haven't you been in to see us lately? We've missed you. Missed me? 
I couldn't get past your secretary here. She said you never wanted to see me. What? Well, there's a grave error somewhere, Miss Croft. I wonder if I could impose on you at this moment, uh, Killer. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I could persuade you to take an order for, uh, say, a dozen of each of your samples. A dozen? Well, uh, make it two dozen. Two? Well, five is the best I can really do. Five? Oh, that's wonderful. That's fine. I... I'm glad he didn't bump the old boy off. Not here. Gee. Gee, thanks. I'll see you. I just knocked off an order from one of the toughest guys in underwear. In what? In the underworld. I'm glad you dropped in, Caleb. I got some business to talk over with you. Yeah? I would appreciate very much if that Maroney gang would take that crummy beer to someplace else. As a matter of fact, that's exactly what we came to talk to you about, ain't it, Killer? Yeah. Show us to our table and we'll talk this thing over. Yes, sir. This way, please. You heard what happened at the Blue Cockatoo last night? We got dispossessed. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, I heard. And Killer Dill is muscling in on our territory. I thought you were going to take care of him. Don't worry. I'll get him. How? That Maboose mob will keep him tighter than Alcatraz on a Saturday night. Yeah. Wait a minute. I just got an idea. Okay, my scientifical friend. Spill it. I moves in with the Maboose mob. You ain't figuring on giving us the cross, little Joe. Listen, will you? We pretend we has a fight. Then you publicly exonerate me. Exonerate you? Throw you out? That's right. Then I'm unemployed. I need a job. So what do I do? I goes to the Maboos mob for employment. I'm beginning to catch you. Now I am his bodyguard, see? And there ain't nothing at all to fix it so I can be alone with him. And then... And that's all there was to it. I had mush nose on the end of my gun, a rod. Uh, if I had my rod with me, I could show you better. You was just, boss. I picked this up for my kid's valentine this morning. Oh, yeah. So I said to Mushnose, okay, start them hands climbing. Higher! One more move out of you and your middle name is lead, see? And what did Mushnose do? Mushnose turns and springs like a panther. Okay, Mushnose, I said. You asked for it. Now take it. Why, you... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Mabuse. I didn't know it was a water gun. It's okay. Forget it. Get your kicks while you can, boss. That's what I always say. Yeah. What you just did was slow suicide. I told you I put it for my kid, boss. I didn't know it was loaded. Ah, uh, forget it. Forget it. Say, Mabuse, uh, did you check on that rumor? Yeah, but it's not a rumor. Little Joe really have a beef with the Maroney Bunch? That's right, and he's joining our mob. He's on his way over here right now. Of course, if that's all right with you, boss. Oh, sure, sure. Sure. Hi, fellas. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Little Joe. Say, boys, I could use little dough. I got news for you. Hi. Uh, public enemy number 21. Public enemy number 21? Killer deal. In fact, I was on my way over now to see about his health. Well, sit you sit you don't like him. Boss, you left the blue cockatoo off pretty easy. Only 200 cases. That's all he could handle. He said if we put in 400 cases, there wouldn't be room for people to dance. Oh, we did. Well, maybe a beer bottle across his skull would have changed his mind. Who's giving the orders around here? Oh, well, you are, killer. I'm sorry, no, no offense.
Here, my boost. We collected 83 bucks so far. Oh, that's good. That's fine. Hey, boss, would you like to go in on these flowers with us? Who died? <laughs> How do you like that? Always thinking of business. <laughs> no, no. This is for a wedding. A mouthpiece is getting married. What? Yeah, Will Allen, you know. He's marrying that cute little chick, Judy Parker. By the way, my boots, uh, little Joe's waiting outside. Oh, he is? We'll send him in. Is that all right with you, boys? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Hey, Killer. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Nothing's the matter. Well, hi, you little Joe. Hi. Hey, boss. You know little Joe, don't you? Yeah. We met. Never thought I'd be working for you, boss. Okay, little Joe. Come on. What's with? I got a steer for you, my boost. The 51 Club. Now, what's the deal? They're tired of the Maroney Hooch. They're ready for somebody with a proposition. You wouldn't be playing games with us, would you, little Joe? Now, don't I look grown up? Okay. Hey, boss, maybe we better take a run over there right now. Hey, boss. Huh? Oh, oh, you, you go on. I, I don't feel like going out today. Maybe I better not go too. I'm hot in that territory. That's right. Maybe you better not. Hey, killer. Keep an eye on little Joe. Don't let him get frisky. Yeah. I'll watch him. Where do we pick up the boys? They're down in the lobby with the pinball machine. Hey, we pick them up on the way out. Oh, and here's a tip on your spiel. Judy, you can't marry him. Alan's no good for you. He'll only make your life miserable. Why don't you go and fight for the girl you love? You and your big talk about mush nose. Why don't you act the way you talk? I'm gonna stop you, Alan. I'm gonna kill you, you double-crosser. Take it easy, killer. Don't shoot, I'll sing. You will? Yeah. It was me. I killed Maroney. Oh, well, you caused me an awful lot of trouble, you know. I didn't mean to kill her, honest, I didn't. Put that gun down, will you? It might go off. Yes, it might, and it will. I was going to tell you about it before, killer. Honest, I was, but something kept coming up. I couldn't get to you. You were? Yeah. It was on my conscience. Something excruciating. Now, will you put that gun down? Wait a minute. You're going to write that confession. Here. Here's some paper. Now, you put it down on there or else. Now, look. Hand that gun more careful, will you? It might go off. I'll give the orders here. You write. With your hands up. How am I going to write with my hands up? Uh, against the wall. I am a... Uh, how do you spell rat? R-A. Look, just put down that you kill Maroney, how you did it, and then sign it. Oh. Okay. Here you are, killer. All in black and white. Oh, gee. Thanks, little Joe. I... Now, you didn't think you was going to get it, did you? No, wait, please. I, I was just going to... I'm going to blow your brains out. Please, don't. Why, you dirty little... Look, I'll get you the same way I got Maroney. You I, I, ain't going to do nothing, little Joe. No more, you ain't. It's a lucky thing I came up to check on you.
gosh. Ten floors. Should have been 40. Oh. Oh, boy. Little Joe killed. When? Oh, I see. Okay, thanks, my booze. My booze. That awful gangster. I don't like him. Oh, now, Judy, it's clients like that that pay for honeymoons. Well, since our honeymoon can only be for two weeks, I don't see why it shouldn't be paid for by nicer clients. Oh, now, honey. You might have told me you were getting married today. Well, I tried to, but you were too busy. Well, I've never been that busy. What is that? Hmm? It's a confession. Little Joe confessed to the murder of Maroney. No! Yes. Do you realize what that means? It'll prove that I'm not a public enemy. I can quit the Mabuse gang, and I don't have to be afraid of Maroney anymore. Oh, Johnny, I'm so happy for you. Yeah. Now you really are free. Yes, well, sir. it always was free. I proved that in court. Yes, but you didn't prove that I wasn't a gangster. This does. All right, it does. It also proves a lot of other things. You can hurt a lot of people with this little piece of paper, Johnny. What do you mean, hurt a lot of people? Well, suddenly, you're not public enemy number 21. It would make Mabuse the laughing stock of the country. Well, if it's only Mabuse that's gonna hurt, let him laugh. I don't care. Well, I wouldn't care either if it didn't affect Judy. Judy? The effect is indirect, I know. And I don't care about losing my law practice. I'm not thinking of myself. But you wouldn't want to throw anything in the way of Judy's happiness, would you, Johnny? Mm, no, but... Well, then, let's destroy this before it does any damage. Uh, there. Now you have nothing to worry about. No, I guess not. Well, <laughs> good luck to both of you. Thanks. Do you mind if I kiss the bride? Why, <laughs> no, go right ahead. <laughs> I hope you'll both be very happy. Well, that straightens him out. I'm glad you did that. Are you, Judy? Well, I, I was afraid you might misunderstand. <laughs> I understand perfectly. Oh, well, that's swell. Now, we have a date with the minister. No, Will. I've got a date with public enemy number 21. You see, I like my hoodlum smile. Johnny, Johnny, aren't you going to come to my wedding? No, I couldn't stand to watch you getting married to somebody else. Well, if I beg you, will you come? No. Oh, but you've got to. Why? How can I marry you if you're not there? What did you say? I said, how can I marry you if you're not there? Oh. Oh, Judy. Did I say mild? Telephone, Mr. Allen. It's Mr. Mabuse. Hello, Mabuse. They got you and Louie in jail. And the McFeeders brothers, too. Well, I'll be right down with bail. What's that? Oh, are you kidding? Why, they can't put me in jail. Hey, buddy, do you know where I can get a good lawyer? I know a good guy. You do? Uh, he defended Taylor Dell, a lawyer named Will Allen. <laughs> <laughs>